U.S. men's national team has won the CONCACAF Nations League. What a night for United States soccer. They beat Mexico to do it. It is absolutely unreal to sit here and think about this. But I thought it was important that we can get a second to sit down and and sort of digest what has happened here because there's a lot to think about. And I'm still emotional. I'm recording this like minutes after the game has ended. So, I mean, it's, it's all still raw to me. And I think to a lot of you, it's going to be for a couple days, those of you who have been big fans of the team. So coming from me, someone who has followed this team, was very close to this team, um, this is something that I thought was very valuable so that we can talk about what this means, why it's so valuable, why, why this could be the jumping off point for U.S. soccer going forward. And I want to start, you know, kind of on that note, going back to 2017. For those of you who've been fans that long, that October, what was it, October 10th, 2017, one of the darkest days in U.S. soccer, losing to Trinidad and Tobago and failing to qualify for the 2018 World Cup, which we now know with the benefit of hindsight was one of the great tournaments in the history of the World Cup and the U.S. was not a part of it. Um, It was absolutely one of the most depressing nights to watch that happen and you just get filled with this sense of hopelessness like what what does this team bring to the table what what is this team about that team was full of a lot of older players players that we had seen around for a long time there wasn't a lot of new young blood that we would think these are the guys that are going to revitalize the team in fact only four players that were on that squad in 2017 were on the team tonight uh, for the Nations League and it just goes to show you how much the team has changed so at the time Christian Pulisic who at that time was already recognized as the face of U.S. soccer going forward uh, the golden boy of American soccer and he came out it was incredibly emotional and he said it, it, it you know was a really really dark time for him personally and he took that loss very personally and it just the fact that Kristen Pulisic becomes the person who earns the penalty and then converts the penalty to give the United States a win it's poetic on so many levels obviously this game this Nations League final it means I think so much to us as fans because this is not a game that the U.S. you know dug in its heels and just hoped that Mexico wouldn't score this was a game where for long stretches of time it felt like the U.S. was uh, was incredibly competitive if not the better team at least in my eyes and it ends up being I think just one of the one of the matches between these two countries that will go down in legend when it comes to talking about this rivalry you know in in 50 years we can talk about this match as as one of them that that defines the rivalry between the United States and Mexico for a whole lot of reasons of fans returning for the first time in over a year and the first nations league and you know the US feeling all this pressure that you know, it seemed that over and over and over again, the U.S. had conquered everyone else in CONCACAF but just couldn't get past Mexico. And it was like that in the last Gold Cup. And it's been like that in, in qualifying for World Cups. And it's, it's always been like this, um, at least for a long time when it comes to U.S. soccer. This is, I believe, the U.S.'s first defeat of Mexico uh, in a cup final since the 2007 Gold Cup, I think. So you're talking about almost 15 years of losing to Mexico in cup finals. Um, and it just is cathartic in a lot of ways to U.S. fans and specifically to the players, the four players that were there in 2017 when the U.S. failed to qualify for the World Cup. Uh, Christian Pulisic, DeAndre Yedlin, Kellen Acosta, and uh, Tim Ream were all on that team. And all four of those guys, if my math is correct, all four of those guys played tonight, played in the Nations League final. So they all got the opportunity 
to set things right in a lot of ways. Uh, I, in fact, they all started. And so they all got the opportunity to set things right going back to 2017. But when you look at this team that won the Nations League, this team is comprised mostly of guys that only the absolute most passionate and connected USMNT fans had heard of in 2017, and maybe not even then. A lot of us had heard of Weston McKinney, but he wasn't on that team. Well, he was here tonight, and he scored, and he played a huge role. Uh, you know, John Brooks. Uh, obviously, we knew of John Brooks, but he wasn't there during that qualifying run. Uh, Serginho Dest plays tonight. Um, Gio Reyna scores tonight. Josh Sargent starts tonight. And just going down the list of players that suddenly, after 2017, have become so important, I think, to the way that this team looks. Tim Weah came on and had one hell of a shift in this match, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people believe that Yunus Musa would have started. I think he probably would have, and I think he should have. Ethan Horvath. I, I mean, can we talk about Ethan Horvath? Can we talk about his contribution, how clutch it is, especially as a goalkeeper, to come onto the field completely cold, never expecting to play, and doing what he did, making great saves and then saving a penalty. Uh, if you... If you know Ethan Horvath, if you see Ethan Horvath, if you see a guy named Ethan, buy him a drink, buy his meal, buy his drive through whatever, because tonight Ethan Horvath is an American hero. There may be some out there that are not from the U.S. or are not so much plugged into the U.S. men's national team uh, and, and would say, you know, this is a new tournament and... Uh, it's not that big a deal. This isn't the biggest tournament the U.S. is going to play, and that's definitely true. But the fact that it is Mexico, first of all, first of all, the U.S.'s biggest rival, without question, the way that the match went down, as violent as it became, as controversial as it was in the end, um, you know, the the fans getting involved and throwing projectiles and all this stuff. This it's it's, it's classic U.S. Mexico rivalry, and as a U.S. fan. You, you just, there's this cycle that, you, that we fall into where we do well, the U.S. does well and beats a lot of teams and looks really good, and then you're like, okay, well, when's Mexico? Because that's when it's going to end. Mexico's going to come and beat us, and, and, and we'll have to go all the way back to the starting line and figure it all out again, only to build back up and get beat by Mexico again. That sort of, that cycle has existed for U.S. soccer fans for a long time. Um, and tonight, I think, not only did it not go down like that tonight, but to me it felt like there may be a little bit of a changing of the guard. The average age of this U.S. team was about 24 years old. So everyone on this field is going to get better as they get older. I mean, presumably. Um, with the possible exceptions of Yedlin and, and Reem and maybe Brooks, are the veterans, but everyone else that plays, everyone that comes onto the field is t uh, under the age of 25. They all have shown incredible promise. Uh, Christian Pulisic is, in my opinion, still going to be one of the best players in the world in the next three years, uh, at least if he's allowed to shine. And you look at the difference between the team in 2017 guys that are struggling for playing time in the MLS versus the team now as it stands in 2021, this team that came out for the Nations League where you have Weston McKinney who features for Juventus, Gio Reyna features for Dortmund, Christian Pulisic features for Chelsea, Serginho Dest features for Barcelona, you know, Zach Steffen is backing up one of the best goalies in the world at Man City. Like, that's the kind, that's the kind of team that the U.S., is now made of and with more to come. I mean, Tyler Adams uh, plays for Leipzig and, and there's just so many that you look at and, and you say these players, um, th this isn't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I told you that I'm still emotionally wrecked from that match. Um, but looking at the makeup of this team, you just say this, this is the future of the U.S., but it's also the present. All these players are great now, and they were great tonight against Mexico. And that, it's, it's amazing to think about. I think there's a lot of people 
and hopefully we'll actually be able to talk about this more in depth uh, on this channel in the coming days. There's a lot of people that want to kind of take a, a, a negative view of this. Uh, because as U.S. fans, we are kind of a pessimistic group, and Mexico is a big reason why we're a pessimistic group. Um, and, and so you would look at this and you would say, well, yeah, but, you know, the Mexico was missing this player and this other player, and, and you know, the VAR decisions could have gone this way or that way, and, you know, the U.S., uh, they, didn't, they didn't score a goal to run a play. Uh, all the goals were offset pieces, and so yeah, I mean we can look at it and say all that. And my one concern from the game is is the U.S. didn't have any goals in the run of play, but that's I, I think a different issue. I think if you are someone who's going to look at this pessimistically, you have that right. But I think you have a duty to yourself as a U.S. fan to think about how far this team has come. Because you don't just stumble into beating Mexico in a game like this. Not when you just missed out on a World Cup not four years ago, right? You don't, you don't just find yourself in the position where you beat Mexico. Not in a game like this. Not 3-2. to two, Not in extra time. Not with everything that was going on. Not after a pandemic that, that totally changed the way players have to approach their national team duty and work out and stop them from playing competitive matches for a year and a half. Um, you, you don't just luck yourself into that. So I encourage all of you to step back and look at this positively and say, what are the things that went right for the United States? And there are a lot of things that went right. The fact that the U.S. did not give up after a horrible mistake by Mark McKenzie leads to an early goal for Mexico within two minutes. And that's just, I mean, as a fan... There's not a worse scenario. You see that, and you're like, that's it. I mean, that's just, it'll break the backs of the players right now. And they didn't. And remember, this is a team whose average age is 25 years old. Not even 25 years old, right? So this is this is a young team. This is a team whose captain, Christian Pulisic, is 22 years old. So there would have been so many excuses for the U.S. to just give up after after conceding that early goal, but they didn't. Uh, so that's a positive. The fact that so many of these players are young, basically every player who contributed tonight is under the age of 25. Uh, that is incredibly valuable because you don't hit your prime in soccer until you're close to the age of 30. Uh, maybe, maybe these days, maybe between 26 and 29, uh, depends who you ask. Either way, a lot of these players are probably not even in their playing primes yet. So this is a pretty good collection of players to go up against a veteran Mexico team whose average age was 29 years old. Guys that have played in World Cups, guys that have played in Gold Cup Finals. I mean, guys that have played everywhere in the world. They know what they're doing. This is an experienced bunch that Mexico put out there. And the U.S. was able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and not get bent, not get broken when they gave up an early goal, especially one as demoralizing as uh, as a massive defensive mistake early on. Um, the fact that the team was able to stay together, uh, you know, late in the game when Mexico started mounting the pressure, and the fact that the team was able to stay together when Mexico earned a penalty. Uh, Kristen Pulisic being so calm, cool, and collected from the penalty spot to just slot it top bins you know, right where right where Mama hides the cookie jar. You know, right right in that upper 90. We dream of that playing FIFA, and Christian Pulisic just does that in front of thousands of people with a Nations League title on the line. There's so much to be positive about from this game, and I think that you are doing yourself a disservice if you're a fan if you don't at least give yourself a few hours to step back and enjoy all the positives that come from this uh, I don't I'm not concerned with talking about the future uh, I, I don't at this moment I don't care about World Cup qualifying all of that is going to come we I mean we have to put this into perspective this isn't a World Cup this is a Nations League so there there are more important things when it comes to the entire scope of international soccer but for right now as fans we owe it to ourselves to enjoy this moment uh, and this, I hope, will be the catalyst for the U.S. program developing and becoming 
something really special, a, a better program than we've ever seen from the United States in the history of this country. And I think we only do that if, as fans, we can we can recognize the positive when it comes. I don't know how many out there are are taking a more pessimistic view of this. Uh, I hope not many are, but but if you are, just remember that there's a lot of good things that can come from this, and it happens if all of us as fans recognize the positives that are going on right now and recognize that this could be the worst iteration of the USMNT that we see for the next five years. I mean, that's that's definitely possible in terms of this group of players being on the field. This might be the worst that they play as a group, you know, because of how much they're going to develop and because of some of the guys that will slot in there. If we do see uh, Yunus Musa, if we do see Tyler Adams playing more regularly, if we do see maybe Matt Miazga or Richards or guys like that, um, this team could potentially get a lot better, a lot better. And I, I just think that as fans, we have to remember that. This is the point where the U.S. the U.S. national team can really bounce off of. This is the starting point for something really special that can happen. And going into a brutal World Cup qualifying schedule, this is the kind of thing the U.S. needed. That A reminder to all the players that they do belong on the same field as the kinds of teams that will be expected to compete for World Cup championships. Um, and in the case of a lot of these players that have seen what that's like up close, I think now they can contextualize it and they say, I've seen that, I've seen the players, and now I've been on the field and I've hoisted a major trophy, so now I can kind of put two and two together. I, I, I know that I belong on this competitive stage, and I think that for a lot of people, when we look back at 2017, the team that failed to qualify, we looked at a lot of those players and say they don't, they didn't belong on that stage. That team that was put out there, a team that featured a nearly 40-year-old Tim, Tim Howard, Matt Beasler, Darlington Nagby, Bobby Wood. This, this isn't, this isn't anything against any of those players. Those are all fine players. Tim Howard obviously is a legend in the history of the U.S. Uh, national team, um, and you know he should be revered as such. But this collection of players now in 2021, this is the kind of collection that belongs on the field in World Cups, challenging for a World Cup championship. Do I think they're going to win a World Cup championship in 2022? No, but, I mean, stranger things have happened, and really, as we all know as U.S. fans, 2026, the year when we host the World Cup, that is going to be the year when hopefully it all comes together and we have the entire backing of the country behind the U.S. national team and they can go out there and... and shock the entire world that's what we can all hope for and if that happens in 2026 hopefully we can all look back five years ago to the first ever CONCACAF Nations League and, and say that's where it started for a lot of these players that was their first taste of championships that was their first taste of being able to compete with some of the best teams in the world and realizing in real time that they do deserve to be there so that I believe is what this night, this CONCACAF Nations League Championship represents for a lot of these players. And for a lot of us fans, I hope that it represents a turning point from when we don't have to be so cynical anymore and we can understand that there will be ups and downs throughout, you know, for this team. I mean, it's just that's just the nature of how soccer works, but that the ups are going to be so high and the downs are going to be something that we can control that we as fans can finally get to a point where you know we can be happy and uh and not be so pessimistic about this team uh, i i'm sure a lot of people will and in the coming days you know we can talk about the different things that we need to look for in the future and and how you know we no one can get complacent here obviously but for now we can celebrate how great of a win this is and, uh, and hopefully that's what you're all doing right now. So keep an eye out for future videos as we do talk about the broader implications of this game and, and you know the things that we do need to look for for the U.S. Uh, the World Cup qualifying begins soon, and it's a grueling schedule. So uh, things are not over, and, and a World Cup is not guaranteed. We as U.S. fans would know better than anyone. 
But uh, for right now, let's let's celebrate. And again, if you even know anyone named Ethan, just Venmo him twenty dollars right now. Just do it, uh, because Ethan Horvath is an American hero tonight. So hopefully we will all remember that. Uh, keep an eye out for that video, for whatever future videos come in uh, in the future. And uh, please forgive my horrible lack of diction tonight. Uh, it's been emotional for for all of us. So thank you so much for for listening. Please subscribe if you want more of this uh, less emotional, more coherent ramblings in the future. We appreciate you.